Uh, good evening. <laughs> Ooh, first time. Be nice. <laughs> All right. Um, can you give me a second? All right. Um, so you know that Harry Potter was banned, right? Well, it w and it was banned for witchcraft and sorcery. Sor sorcery, and um. The, the thing about Harry Potter is that the witchcraft and sorcery is like the best part about it, along with um, the friendship between um, the characters and um, everything else. Yeah, so I'm gonna be reading from um, chapter 11, which is titled Quidditch. And since I don't have that much time, he will only hear part of it. But I wanted to read this part is because um, I like the game Quidditch. It's really interesting, and I think that J.K. Rowling did a good job of um, creating a game like this about flying and scoring points like basketball. <laughs> I think that's just great. All right, um, let me start. As they entered November, the weather turned very cold. The mountains around the school became icy gray and the lake like chilled steel. Every morning, the ground was covered in frost. Hagrid, who could be, who could be seen from the upstairs window, defrosting broomsticks, on the Quidditch field, bundled up in a long moleskin overcoat, rabbit fur gloves, and enormous beaver skin boots. The Quidditch season had begun. On Saturday, Harry would be playing in his first match after weeks of training, Gryffindor versus Slytherin. If Gryffindor won, they would move up into second place in the house championship. Hardly anyone seen Harry play but would but Wood had decided that, as their secret weapon, Harry should be kept, well, secret. But the news that he was playing Seeker had leaked out somehow, and Harry didn't know which was worse, people telling him he'd be brilliant, or people telling him he, they'd be running around underneath him holding the mattress. It was really lucky that now, that Harry had now Hermione as a friend. He didn't know how he'd have gotten through all his homework without her, with all the last minute Quidditch practiced what it was making them do. She also had lent him Quidditch Through the Ages, which turned out to be a very interesting read. Harry learned that there were 700 ways of committing a Quidditch foul, and that all of them had happened during a World Cup match in 1473. That Seekers were usually the smallest and fastest players, and that most serious Quidditch accidents seemed to happen to them. That although people rarely died playing Quidditch, Referees had been known to vanish and turn up months later in the Sahara Desert. Hermione had become a bit more relaxed about breaking rules since Harry and Rod had saved her from the mountain show, and she was much nicer for it. The day before Harry's first Quidditch match, the three of them were out in the freezing courtyard during break, and she had conjured them up a bright blue fire that could be carried around in a jam jar. They were standing with their backs to it, getting warm, when Snape crossed the yard. Harry noticed at once that Snape was limping. Harry, Ron, and Hermione moved closer together to block the fire from view. They were sure it wouldn't be allowed. Unfortunately, something about their guilty faces caught Snape's eye. He limped over. He didn't see the fire, but he seemed to be looking for a reason to tell them off anyway. What's that you've got there, Potter? It was Quidditch through the ages. Harry showed him. Library books are not to be taken outside the school, said Snape. Give it to me. Five points from Gryffindor. He's just made that rule up, Harry muttered angrily as Snape limped away. Wonder what's wrong with his leg. Don't know, but I hope it's really hurting him, said Ron bitterly. The Gryffindor common room was very noisy that evening. Harry, Ron, and Hermione sat together next to a window. Hermione was checking Harry's and Ron's charms homework for them. She would never let them copy. How will you learn? But by asking her to read it through, they got the right answers anyway. Harry felt restless. He wanted Quidditch through the ages back to take his mind off his nerves about tomorrow. Why, sh tomorrow. why should he be afraid of Snape? Getting up, he told Ron and Hermione he was going to ask Snape if he could have it back. Better, better you than me, they said together. But Harry had an idea that Snape wouldn't refuse if, they were, if there were other teachers listening. He made his way down to the staff room and knocked. There was no answer. He knocked again, nothing. Perhaps Snape had left the book in there. It was worth a try. He pushed the door ajar and peered inside, and a horrible scene met his eyes. And if you read Harry Potter, you would know what's happening next, but I'm not gonna tell you, so you have to read. 
Yeah.